check your pulse, and turn off your phone. Get ready to be entertained. The Bronx Edulution is back, and we've got more youth voices, educational partnerships, exciting global discoveries with Alexi Gingertopoulos, dollar store science experiments with Dr. Whitey Black, and tons of ways for you to engage with us as we bring laughter and knowledge right to your doorstep. Me and the crew welcome you to season three of the Bronx Edulution. What's up, creative family? Uh, did we interrupt something? Well, if we did, it's all for a good reason. We welcome you to another episode of the Bronx Edulution. Thank you for joining us on this ride. We have a great episode in store for you today. But before we begin, I just wanna spread some positivity. It's summertime and I know you have your plans and fun activities that you wanna do, but just remember to enjoy every single day. Share love with others and be one of support to folks that are in need and to the people that are around you. An act of kindness can go a long way. If you spread positivity, I guarantee you, it will find its way back to you. Check out this next amazing presentation, all from BronxNet's high school internship program. Hello community, welcome to the Bronx Edulution. My name is Samish Brown, I'm a student at Equality Charter High School. I am here with my friend Leilani and we'll be talking about mental health and how it impacts the students. So let's get right into it. Why is mental health important? Mental health is important because it... <clears throat> because it... It's okay. Mm, because... Because it's, you know, it's important because it's like highlighting that there's like an issue within, you know? Instead of just going on day to day without feeling... It abnormal. makes, yeah. yeah. It makes it known like that you know what's going on if it's good or bad. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. So, how is mental health overlooked? It's overlooked because people think it's just an emotion mm -hmm. and not like something serious. They think it's like a phase. True. Because mm -hmm. some parents look at it and be like, you're sad, get over it. Like, know, it's right? whatever. Mm -mm. And why do you think kids don't like speak up about it like enough? I feel like some kids think they'll get judged or um, they don't think they need help. Like, they want to do it on their own since it's within them and only them. True. Because most kids, like, nowadays, it's like, they're, like... They think that when you speak up about it, it's when people try to act like they care. Because it's yeah. always there, and, like, you can tell, like, it's there, but it's, like, once you acknowledge it, like, and talk, tell somebody about it, it's, like, they're just giving you unneeded attention. Like, are you okay? Are you okay? Like, every second. Like, and that's not what you need. That. Yeah. Um, <sighs> why don't parents... Why don't you think parents take it serious? I feel like parents don't take it serious because it's like you're growing. Like, they feel like because you don't have a job or, like, bills to pay, like, you don't have real stress. Like, going to school, you see your friends every day. Mm -hmm. That's not stress. Like, you're just going to school. But I feel like they also don't take it seriously because it's like if they take it seriously, they're going to see a flaw within themselves, you know? Yeah. Because it's like as parents, parents mess up. Not every parent, don't, like, is willing to say, oh, I did this to my child. That's why they act like that. They're afraid to like acknowledge that they're the problem. I think they don't take in consideration that like school can can like ruin someone. If that makes sense, like like a bad grade can ruin them in that class True. or yeah, their mood. Yeah, especially when you have to, like, when some parents are like, oh, if you don't, like, do good in school, you're done. Like, if, you know, yeah. like, the unneeded pressure. Mm -mm. How should you find a trusted person to talk to? I feel like just easy, like, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to find somebody that's trustworthy enough to talk to. Because, like, even, like, your friends, you can tell them something and it's like, at the end of the day, they'll take it and use it against you because you're not mm -hmm. talking to them or something. Like, like I feel like it's kind of hard, but when the right person comes, it's like you feel it, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's also hard for people to talk to others. It's like they won't know how to explain how they feel because they don't think other people is going to re not react the same way, but, like, understand where they're coming from or if they experience it as well. True. And I also think that, you know, when, like, yeah, they have to ease into it. Because most people, like, when people tell them certain, like, stuff that they trust them with before they talk, 
you know, about mm-hmm. stuff that they have that they want to talk about. Yeah. Um, how to deal? Like, how do you think people can deal with un- like unnecessary attention or trying to be heard? I feel like well, it depends on the person. I feel like they're gonna cover up and be like, "Oh, I'm fine," you know, with a smile. But then, if like someone who really cares about you keeps pressuring you and saying, "Are you okay? I've seen this way, this way, this way," is like, I think they'll end up saying it because they know that person actually is worrying about them. They don't want other people to worry. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, they can set boundaries and be like, oh, um, I like that you care, but limit. Like, just put a limit to it. Yeah. You know? Um, what is methods to cope with mental health at the moment? Um, I feel like they can, like, like, read. Like, find a hobby, basically. Like, if it's journaling. Because journaling helps certain people. Yeah. Listening to music, crying. Things to take day. up their time. Yeah. Like, to distract themselves, but also to, like, not, like, fully distract themselves to the point that they know there's a problem, but when they no longer have that distraction, like, it just hits them. Like, I feel like they should have something that they can just go to when they're, like, stressed. Like, for example, like, if it's, like, listening to music, for example, you can do that, like, regularly. Like, if you feel the yeah. like emotions coming down, just put your headphones on and lie down, cry it out, like, or something, you know? Yeah. How do you think they can... What are some methods people can use? I think methods people can use is, like you said, occupying themselves because sometimes I feel like it can occur most when it's like when they're by themselves and they don't feel like they have anyone to talk to. So when they occupy themselves, it's like taking their mind off of whatever is stressing them out or making them feel that way. Okay. What would you tell someone younger than you to that's going through it? Just go through it. Like, or talk to somebody you can trust. Like, if it's your mom or, like, your dad, you know? Or, like, if it's writing it out, do that. Like, if it's your sibling or something. But some people don't feel comfortable telling it to their family. I mean, true. But they got to be, like... not. Some people aren't close with their family, so I can't, yeah. like, say there's got to be somebody in there that you can trust. But... Open-minded. Yeah, maybe your friends, maybe. Or, like, I feel like something I would tell somebody younger than me that's, like, going through this is basically, like, write it out. Because I feel like that's what works for me. Because mm-hmm. it's like, girl, come on. Not everybody's going to sit there and really... Like, you can have friends and they don't want to listen to you. Yeah. And like, they just want to tell you their problem and just, okay. Like, what am I going to do about that? And just keep it pushing. So just write it out and just write, like, write everything. Don't write, oh, I'm stressed. Yeah, just like what's going right, every, with it. Yeah, just write everything that's going on in your mind. If it's, oh, I fell yesterday, write it out. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. What did you tell somebody younger than you? I would say to, hmm, I would tell someone younger than me, I would say not to do anything like, what's, what's that word? Harmful to yourself? No, like, when you, don't this, when you don't think before you do it. I forgot the word. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I want to say that because I feel like, Actions have consequences, and if you do something under that mindset, you're gonna you're gonna do something you're gonna regret later, and you know it's not gonna have a good outcome. So it's like you shouldn't decide anything until you like thought it through. Solution. We are Bronx Strong. Congratulations, Bronx Net, on your 30th anniversary. Bronx Best is my show, and I had a great experience being able to bring my story to the Bronx Network. Um, it's changed, really changed my life, and I look forward to growing with the network and. Um, I think that uh, it's a wonderful place to grow and learn. And I think that everyone should take advantage of all the wonderful programs and things that, that go on here. How do you think people can-
can balance like their school life and their social life. I feel like that's what causes people to stress, trying to balance the different mm. as not well aspects of it, because school school and social life is different. It's like when you have school friends, you hang out with school people, like maybe outside of school but not at home. Your social life could be like. Maybe you not. Maybe you don't have a social life. As in, you don't have no one else to talk to but school friends. So is that you're always with them? And it's like, I think that causes people to have stress because if you keep going to the same person about your problems, it's like you might think you're getting annoying or like they don't want to hear you out no more since your social life is like not there. Limited. Limited. Yeah, I feel like like they can balance it by basically, you know, just. Balance ticket if we're being real, that's like say um, school like that's like how I behave in school like that's for school, but how I behave outside of school like it's for outside of school. Cause if you try to like mix them, that can also cause stress, you know, mm -hmm. like real stress. So it's like you have to find like a way for that works for you basically. Yeah, I agree. So. How do you deal with your mental health? With my mental health, I have a... So they have apps, and it's like, you tell them about your day, mm -hmm. and like how your feelings and stuff, the things you went through. So I tell it like my emotions, even if I was literally fine throughout the whole day, I still mm -hmm. say it because I take it as... Like a as friend? like a, a journey of like fixing myself, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. I'm writing down my feelings to myself so I can recap on how I did and like see what made me happy so if I get in that mindset, I can go back to that. True. So how do you do with your mental health? Um, for me, I mean, it depends. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes, I just don't acknowledge it sometimes if you're being real. But like, when I do feel like stressed or something, it's like, I talk to my mom, cause I have a close relationship with my mother. So it's like sometimes I talk to her, tell her how I'm feeling, and then, you know, when she goes into that mommy mode, I'm like, girl, come on, I don't <laughs> want that right now, be my friend, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, she like talk to me, tell me I can like listen to music, and just be there for me, and I like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and like other times when I feel like I don't want to bore her, like, you know, just like call her to be like, oh, I'm stressed. Like, I just write it out, and literally, I record myself, like talking, <laughs> and it's like, I'm really like, it might sound stupid, and, like, you don't have to re-listen it. And that's the funny, like, that's the thing about it. Like, you can just record yourself talking about your day and, like, what, like, you didn't like that day or, like, what made mm -hmm. you stress, and delete it after. So it's, like, it's just there and out the way, you know? Do you think, like, there can be people or, like, events that trigger people to have a bad mental health? Like, if, like, yeah, that's like I say it. Yeah. But, like... You think it, could, it should be traumatic or just something small? I feel like, I feel like it depends. Because, you know, certain people, that, like, they can feel people's energy. There's not, like, a certain thing that they did that triggered, like, them, you know? So it's like, you can feel their energy, and it's like, oh, mm -mm, that's not the vibe that I want to be around. And, like, that energy can drain you, like, mm -hmm. without you even knowing it. Because it's like certain people, like, you know, that's why most people cut people off, like friends. Like you can be like dumb close to them, and they just you don't see them with them no more because they were draining their energy, like yeah. and like just with their like with their own energy. You know, because they can be fun and all, but because they have things going on that they don't acknowledge, like you can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel agree. like yeah. So, like, what are some hobbies you think that? causes you to feel less stressed? Hmm. I listen to music or I take naps because I feel like sleeping it off is a good way to like, to isolate yourself from your thoughts. I know that sounds bad, but it's like, in certain moments, like, if it gets really bad, that's what I would do like for myself. You? I agree with you. Uh, for me, girl, I just be on my iPad playing Roblox. <laughs> like, it's just simple like by myself chilling listening mm -hmm. to music look at myself in the mirror like like you make some funny faces yeah laugh at myself <laughs> cry to myself just anything that makes me happy in that moment if it's like eating food like i don't care that's a hobby to me i love eating 
I'll eat all the time. But I feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like, actually, no, because that can be unhealthy. Because some people can use food to get away from certain things, but end up being addicted. So, like, yeah. yeah, that's scary. But, yeah, I like listening to music, too. Sleeping. I love sleeping. Um, yeah. Do you think, like, a certain genre of music can also affect you? I mean... Like, getting affect you into like getting into that mindset like like sad music or like a certain artist i feel like it depends but it's also what's your comfort music at the end of the day because if it's sad music that makes you like you know deal with it then go ahead but if it's like pop music go ahead rap music go ahead mm -hmm. all of that what right. what do you think we can do to help others heal like verbally physically um, acknowledge it. Because mm. some people, like, you think that not everybody just, like, there. But some people are literally waiting for somebody to acknowledge it. Because some people are going through things, they'd be like, oh my gosh, am I the only one going through this? But once you acknowledge it, they'll feel, like, more, oh, I'm not the only one going through this. I can see, yeah. seek help now. Because, you know, no, no. And I feel like if, when they acknowledge it, and they try to connect, that shows them like also that they're not alone, that other people go through it, even in the same, it could be the same scenarios and stuff. Okay, so, yeah, I agree with you, and it was lovely having you here and acknowledging, you. like, you know, mental health. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in this discussion. It never ceases to amaze me how creative our interns have been. Every time they become comfortable, you get to see and witness true creativity, true passion, and true purpose. When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. This quote from beloved Mr. Rogers brings a glimmer of light even in the darkest of times. Fred Rogers is known for his warmth, kindness, and unwavering dedication to nurturing the hearts and minds of children everywhere. Fred Rogers was an American television personality, puppeteer, writer, producer, and Presbyterian minister from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Rogers was best known as the creator and host of the television series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which aired from 1968 to 2001. The show was aimed primarily at preschool-aged children and focused on topics such as kindness, empathy, self-esteem, and imagination. His approach to television was groundbreaking, as he addressed important social and emotional issues in a way that was accessible and comforting to young viewers. Beyond his work in television, Rogers was also an advocate for children's education and welfare. He received numerous awards and honors throughout his lifetime, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2002. In a world often filled with uncertainty and turmoil, Fred Rogers' timeless wisdom reminds us to seek out the helpers amidst the chaos. These helpers are the embodiment of compassion, courage, and selflessness tirelessly working to bring comfort and aid to those in need. Imagine if we all approached life with the same outlook as Fred Rogers. What if we looked beyond the fear and despair and focused instead on the countless acts of kindness and generosity that surround us every day? We would find solace in knowing that no matter how daunting the challenges we face may seem, we are never alone. Fred Rogers' legacy extends far beyond the television screen transcending generations and inspiring countless individuals to embrace empathy, understanding, and love. His gentle reminder to look for the helpers empowers us all to feel hopeful and resilient even in the midst of adversity. So let us heed Fred Rogers' timeless advice and hold fast to the belief that in times of darkness, the light of kindness will always prevail. And may we, like the helpers he spoke of, continue to spread love and compassion wherever we go, making the world a brighter and more beautiful place for all. And that's the juice. Get more quotes, bios, and news articles like this by signing up for the juice. Fresh articles crafted daily by journalists and educators help you stay informed about the latest in world news, STEM, and current events. 
The platform combines captivating stories with innovative technology delivered to you at your reading level, ensuring you're never left feeling confused about the news again. The Juice empowers kids to enhance their reading skills through engaging articles and videos that can be enjoyed at their own pace. Sign up today and elevate your knowledge and reading abilities with The Juice. Thank you, Bronx Ned. Congratulations on 30 years. What an amazing accomplishment. On behalf of myself, Alina Dow, and I represent the Dow Twins and the Dow Twins Show, who are young producers. They are, they started, I think, when they were 11, and now they're 14. They started making 30 second little fun facts, and now they are doing 30 minute shows. And it goes to a testament of how much you guys do in the Bronx to make young people want to continue to be involved. I wish you 30 more amazing years and beyond. Thank you for what you do. Hey, creative family. So I wanted to talk to you for a moment about some of the characters that I've created for our show, Edulution. By now, many of you are familiar with Dr. Y.T. Black, right? Dr. Y.T. Black is a guy who loves science and he does all of these crazy experiments. But my goal behind that was not only to get not only youth and whomever is watching TV with them interested in science and fun, easy science experiments, it's also, also to show you how accessible science can be because all of those products that we use come from the dollar store. Another character that I created is Alexi Ginger Topolis. Now, Alexi is a young kid who is homebound and she likes to teach other youth how to travel using their cell phone so that they can go anywhere in the world. Check out this scene with Alexi Gingertopoulos and watch how easy it is to understand what brings us all together around the world in a study of culture. Yasu everybody, my name is Alexi Gingertopoulos and I'm here to talk to you about how you have the power to travel anywhere in the world that you want to travel, no matter how much money you have and no matter where you live. So my mommy is Greek and my daddy is African American. And so this summer we took a trip over to Mykonos. And when we got to the island, I learned about money. Have you ever seen money from Greece? It looks like this. Wow. It's called drachma, okay? And I looked up online that it takes 314 of these $1 bills in, in drachma to equal one US dollar. I don't think that's so good, but we saw it. And this is the flag of Greece. I don't know if you know, but it's blue and white. Can you see that? It's blue and white. So. I decided to look up some things on my Google because I want to teach everybody about how to travel from their phone, okay? So if you've got your own little, like, I don't know, take a piece of paper and just write down all the countries you've ever thought about or that you've ever heard about on TV and that you ever want to go to, but you don't know if you'll actually ever go to. I'm hot. And so we're going to go to Greece. And so to say hello in Greece, it's Yasu. Can you say that? Yasu. <laughs> I was so excited when I learned that. And then I also learned how to say thank you very much. Efaristopoli. Okay, Efaristopoli. So every week when you see me, we are going to travel to a brand new place and we're going to learn brand new things and it's going to be super fun. Like, I also learned that in Greece, their number one sport is soccer, but they call it football, but nobody plays with their feet. So I, I don't, I mean, but they only play with their feet. So I guess that does make sense that they would call it football. But over here, we call it football and we play with our hands and people make a lot of money during the Super Bowl, a lot of money. And it's not in drachma. It's not in their money. It's in actual US dollars, which is like way better in my opinion because it takes 
less of them if you want to go and get some treats on the ice cream truck after school, which I love. Okay, so anyway, thank you so much for joining me today on our trip to Greece. This has been so much fun for me to share the things I learned, which are hello, Yasu, and thank you very much. It follows Topoli. Bye. The Bronx Edulution. We are Bronx Strong. BronxNet is a wonderful place because it inspires people that want to consider a career in film and television. It's a way to come learn. It's cost effective, and it's a way to actualize your dreams. Hello, my lovely student. Today, I'm Agnes for. So today, I'll take you guys through some history lessons. And today, we're gonna study about some historical context about Solomonic Dynasty. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the problems facing them. Yeah. So they were facing both internal and external problem between 10th and 16th century AD. And this, the internal problem was caused by the Agao population when Solomonic dynasty attempted to convert the pagan people into Christianity. This brought about a series of war between these two groups, which led to the overthrow of the ruling dynasty by the Falashai Jews. The Falashai Jews were using Old Testament and Apocrypha as their scriptures. And they observed Saturday as their Sabbath. They observed purification of laws and also circumcised both boys and girls. So thank you for listening. And in our next session, we're gonna learn about archeologists and um, numismatics, yeah, and um, primary sources. And, in, um, and some documents. Thank you for listening. That does it for this episode of Edulution. Thank you all for your support. I want to give a special shout out to our partners such as iMentor, The Juice, and all of the schools that have been in connection with us to help put this project together. We appreciate you. As always, I want to say, remember, you have everything you need right now in your current situation to bring your unique idea to the world. Don't forget to check out our website at bronxnet.org forward slash education to pick a class that might be right for you to help you become a certified producer. You'll have access to all of BronxNet studios in any of our three locations at Mercy College, here at Lehman College, and also now in the South Bronx, where you can bring your fresh idea to the world. For all of the things that are vying for your attention, I just wanna say we appreciate your focus. Be blessed.